Hey shiny crafty people, Tim Totten here and welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I made these sleep shorts for a friend of mine uh, and I'm going to make now a matching kimono style um, robe to go along with them to match. Now, what I want that design to look like is I want it to be about uh, not quite full wrist length sleeves. I want it to have a tie sort of on the side and I want the two front pieces to cross over each other. And our shapes are gonna kind of look like the two front sides will look like this, the back here and sleeves and some cuffs. I'm gonna use some of the leftover fabric that I have of the purple. And then I'm going to make it to match this fantastic Little Mermaid fabric that I have. So what do we need to get started? Well, we are gonna need some type of a measuring tape. And I'm gonna use this cloth measuring tape because um, I know I'm bigger than he is, but at the same point, um, I think I would like to, you know, make sure that it fits, will fit me at the minimum and uh, will then obviously fit him and be a little blousy, which is great because um, he's not as big around as I am, but it's meant to be comfortable and flowy. Uh, I will need a rotary cutter or something to cut with. And then I'm going to show you again, I've done another video, and I'll show you in this video how to uh, use a piece of ribbon or something to turn long tubes of fabric, hence we're going to make the ties for the piece. So let's go down here to the cutting table and I'll show you how to get started. So on this, I'm gonna to need to take some measurements off of myself and I've already done a little bit of that. I know that I want at least 24 inches uh, across the shoulders and around the sort of hip waist area. And so to get that 24 inches, I'm gonna make sure this fabric's at least 24 inches wide. I'm also, the fabric's doubled right now uh, it's doubled over. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and be able to cut my size. And then I also decided how much, how large down my body I wanted this to go. So I measured from my shoulder. I'm measuring here from my shoulder. You can see that? Up and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna think, oh, I want this to be at least about 30 inches or so. I think if I do 30 and add my seam allowances. So I'm gonna add a half inch seam allowance at the top and a full one inch seam allowance at the bottom. So if I do half, and, and so that means I'm gonna need 31 and a half inches along here. Now, I'm not gonna worry about ironing this, although you could. It's been washed and ironed before, but now it's, um, it's been sitting in storage for so long. <laughs> and then I know my back needs to be the same size. So I'm actually going to fold this entire piece of material. I'm gonna see where my 30 inches would be, 31 and a half, sorry. And then I will go from there. So I have some measurements on my table. So I can go to 41 and a half. I know that's in this area. And if I use a, little, a few clips, this might be easy. If I go to 41 and a half and put a clip just this side of 41 and a half, then I can fold the fabric over on the other side. I'm gonna follow that through to 41 and a half on this end. And then, wrong side of it. Then I know that I can just fold my fabric over to that point. And I'm gonna have some fabric of this left, which is great. Cause what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the the fr two fronts and the back out to that 41 and a half. And then I'm gonna use only half of the material because this material is doubled over, right? So I'm gonna use the two double pieces for the fronts and then just one piece for the back and then I can get my sleeves out of the other part, which is great. So I'll take the clips out because I know now that's at the right distance. However it takes you to get to 41 and a half is great. Whatever is the best plan for you. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit and take it to 61 and a half. And then I just have to cut the 20 inch mark on my table. It's the great part about having a big old table like this is that I can lay a bunch of stuff out. So I'm at 61 and a half, so I'll cut it at 30. So I know my 30 inch measurement is down here. And I actually have a much bigger cutter, so I'll show you what I've done. If you have a big enough table, you can buy one of these huge uh, metal rulers from um, Lowe's or Home Depot or one of those home improvement stores. And the great part is it's so big that I run it across my table and line the lines up. I'm sort of lining the line up down there. And I line it up at the measurement here. Now you can clamp it on, which we do, or you can put some weights on it. I'm gonna do it just by hand because I know where that is. I've been doing this for a long time and I cut it with my rotary cutter. Then I don't move the fabric I'm cutting until I move away the pieces that came off. See here? So now I have those pieces that are the, that, that's 41 and a half, or 31 and a half, sorry. And then I'm just gonna come down here and trim this across at the other end. And um, that will get us to our two different size pieces. 
Actually, I'll just fold it open and then cut it at 41 or at the 31 and a half mark so I don't worry about not getting them all the same size. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'll come back and we'll do the next part. So I've got my two pieces. These will be the two fronts and that'll be the back and the and the um, sleeves over there. And then so I need to cut these shapes for the front. And I definitely want to make sure the shoulder is the right width and comes down. And then it'll kind of angle a little bit the bottom, but not too much. I don't mind if it overflows, but I also need to cut out a little bit for the sleeves. And I need to see that I decide how big I want the sleeves to be. Well, this material is 27 and by 31 and a half. And if I cut the 31 and a half in half, it would give me about a 15 inch sleeve, you know, t height of a sleeve. It would let me have about, or sorry, the size of the sleeve. The sleeve would be about this big around for your arm to go into, which is not small, but it's also not enormous. And is that gonna be big enough? No, it actually isn't big enough at the top. So actually, I'm not gonna use this fabric for the sleeve. I may get one sleeve out of here because I want it to be nice, big, billowy sleeves. So in fact, instead of doing it where I get one full, two sleeves out of this half of this material, I'm gonna get one sleeve out. So I need a nice big sleeve and I would like my sleeves to be, you know, about this 20 something inches. But now if I look, that's how big it is. Do I need it to be, could I get the length of it? Yeah, I could. So in fact, I could fold it this way. If I get my sleeves that long, oh, and put the cuffs, that will be perfect. I actually can get two out of here, but I have to figure out what the measurement's gonna be. So I'm sort of doing this off the cuff <laughs> off the cuff. <laughs> uh, I'll see myself out. Um, I'm going to make these sleeves about, that's where we get our, um, this is our 31 and a half inch, uh, no, sorry, my 27 inch width this way. And if I fold it over, is that even long enough? That's kind of a short sleeve. So I know that these are going to be, let's see how wide that is, the measurement. Ooh. That's about 14 inches this way. So that means that on this measurement, I've got to make sure that my opening here is about 14 inches so that there's room for that sleeve to go around. So this opening will be 14 inches. And then I'm going to measure how big I want my um, shoulder piece to be because I don't want the shoulders to be too gigantic, but I wouldn't mind if it sort of fell off the shoulder a little bit. So I'll measure on myself that I want the shoulder to be about nine or 10 inches over that way. So let's do our measurement on here. I'm gonna start at this top fold here and draw it out. And also remember your shoulders sort of, they, um, your shoulders angle up. So I don't wanna do a straight shoulder. I wanna sort of come at an angle and cut about an inch out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this measurement and go at about, Go to about nine inches here. Like I said, nine, right? Make a mark and I'll cut across that. So that'll be where our shoulder comes in, up to our shoulder. But remember, we've got to leave that space for the, the arm because we don't really want it dripping completely off. So I'm gonna take about an inch in. So go about an inch in. Remember, we want 14 inches down. So I'm gonna measure down about 14 inches with this. Now our 14 is gonna be somewhere in here. I'm gonna to go to 13 and come, that angle will give us about 14. So I'll come in and angle it up to that mark that goes up. Okay, is, is it just a slight variation to give us a bit of shape here on the side, but also to make it to where the sleeve is not so far off, okay? Now I'm gonna make this a full, like I said, the full almost 24 inches across so when I do that, did I do that the right way? Hmm. I didn't actually do that the right way. Well, we're going to start again. I'm gonna go this way. You won't see that at the top because it's gonna be cut off anyway. So I'm going to come back in here and start this again. This side will be our edge and we will come down an inch go down to the 14 inch mark, which is right over here. And then we'll bring that up and in to that mark at the top. And actually we need to come over a little more than that. Okay. 
because these aren't even at the side. Okay, then I can come up to the very top point about nine inches. All right, and then that's gonna come off for your... Then I decide how far down I want it to go, so I want it to sort of angle across. And then it comes down, keeps coming down to the point at the edge. And then we're going to, and then we're gonna make sure it comes down to the point at the edge over here and then goes down at a little bit of an angle so it's not like uh, exact. So it's a funky shape, but this is gonna work because when you actually tie it onto yourself, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable. Let me go ahead and cut this out because the two fabrics are back to back so that'll really work well. And again, I'm less concerned with making this perfect because I know that I'm going to fold over each of the edges, but also because it's a big, you know, it's a casual outfit. It's not meant to be a, um, it's not meant to be something that's um, super perfect and it's gonna be very casual to sleep in or to lounge around the house in. Pardon my head if you're getting a good view of my head there. Yeah, look at that. Now we do need to trim this edge off because remember I told you it's not exactly straight. It's not, they're not even over on this side. All right, there are our two pieces and they will crisscross over one another. So basically one goes side that way. The other goes the side this way. And I made them larger than necessary because when I actually go to put them together, I might decide that I don't want them this wide. I don't need it to be this wide and I'll actually, you know, I'll sort of dry fit it and see how it works. All right, let me take you to the next step. Before we go to the next step, I wanna show you that I did change my mind. Uh, I tried this to sort of fit it on how it would fit me and it's really too big even for me. So I'm gonna take off three inches from this side over here because I think it's gonna work better and I just chop that off. It's not gonna be quite so wide now. And now we can go to the back and to the sleeves. So I'll move these pieces out. We'll bring our back piece in. And one of the great things about the back piece, this is that um, 31 and a half inch length right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the, um, cut it in half for right, right away to get the sleeves out of here. And I'm just gonna use the line that was already in there um, from being folded. So I'm just gonna cut right along the fold. So those will be the sleeves and I'll cut those out in a minute. Okay, so there's our back. And the back's gonna be quite wide too, so it's not gonna need to be quite this wide. We'll figure out in a moment how wide I really wanna make it. In fact, I want it to be 24 inches wide, so um, I will look here and I know I don't need any of this over this side. So I will go ahead and fold that up, get the side even over here. You could mark it with a pen if you wanted. Um, again, I'm not worried about this being so exact. So I will go ahead and put my cutter on it. I know this is 24 inches. That pops off and now our back is the right width and I can get ready for the shape. Now what's gonna happen here is these two fronts are gonna lay on this. One goes like this on the side here. And I'm gonna line it up down at the bottom, which you really can't see right now, but I lined up on the bottom and get that lined up perfectly. Now I do the other one the same exact way. And this is where I line the sides up and the bottom corner. Same thing on the other side, make sure I line up the sides and the bottom corner. And so now I can just use my rotary cutter or a pair of scissors. I can use a pen, either one, and I can go through and mark 
this so it matches exactly. Or since I feel comfortable, I'm gonna use my rotary cutter and come in and trim. Just as long as these match each other exactly. Now the difference is you don't wanna cut down this shape. So I'm just gonna cut across for now. went off there a little bit. This is why it might be better to mark it out. And now in between the two here, these two points, I'm just going to scoop it out a little bit. Of course, if you were going from a, a pattern, you would see how that would fit really well. And then here's our neck area. Now remember, all this is going to get folded down. So in fact, it's going to be a lot wider and bigger around for your neck as we've actually stitched it together. So we've added some seam allowances on there to that. Okay, that's the front and the two, the two fronts and the back. And now I wanna go for the sleeves. And for the sleeves, I'm going to use my piece that I had cut right here and cut my two sleeves out of it. And uh, <coughs> I'm gonna make sure that my the longer part, which is good. I'm gonna fold that up in half, and then my sleeves are gonna get cut right out of here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this in half, and to get that half measurement, um, <coughs> I can either fold it like this, is a fun trick. I'm going to fold it across this particular um, cutting grid and push that right into the edge. And then now when I open it, that's the line to cut exactly in half. All right, and those are our two sleeves. So what will happen is when we get this back open, remember where we showed the fronts and the backs? Here. These sleeves will now stitch into here on each edge. Now I'm going to go ahead and just, they're not the exact size, but I don't care because when I stitch them in there, then I will get the right size measurement when I sew up this side seam. So what we'll do first is sew these top edges together, and I'm going to actually use a serger for that. Serge the top edges, then we'll lay this open like this and pin our sleeve in there and stitch it along this edge. And the last thing will be the two sides. So let's go over to the serger and make this happen. All right, here at the serger, I'm gonna sew along those top edges on the shoulders. And uh, I've made my stitch length about, um, I think about a two, I think that's like two millimeters between st uh, the actual stitches. And this is a, uh, a serger, a four thread overlock serger. And I'll show you what that means in just a second because I will start overlocking this edge. It's gonna trim fabric as we go, which is really cool. It trims the fabric off, which gives us a nice clean edge. So you'll see that nice stitch that goes in. And then when it opens up, you get a nice seam in there. So I'll do the other side as well. And I'm starting at the corners, at the edges here, where the sleeve is gonna be added in. You have to be very careful as you're serving because it will cut that edge off, like I said. So this is, there's no room for us to make a mistake and have to go back and fix it. You will, you will not be able to fix it. So those are both stitched on. And then we're gonna open this entire thing up and stitch in the sleeves. So I'm gonna open that up, this piece here, and then I'm gonna bring the sleeve over. And I need to find the center point of the sleeve. So I have the sleeve material here, and I'm gonna fold it in half to find the center point. So I'll take my two ends there and fold this in half to find the center point. Now I'm gonna use a pin, but I'll take it out before I serge because 
if I don't, you are going to, um, you'll hear a loud noise and my machine will break because you cannot stitch over the pin. Now I could trim that with a pair of scissors, but honestly it's gonna get cut off by the blade in the serger anyway. So I'm gonna come here and check my measurement there and just put them together. And like I said, I'm gonna make sure that I take that out before I actually finish, start serging. I'm gonna start at the middle here because I don't wanna to try to start at the end and make it fit. I'd rather start really close to the middle, go off to one end and come back the other way. So I will put it under the presser foot, take the pin out, gone, and start stitching on. And you kind of have to move the fabric in until it connects. Now there is a curve down here, so I'll curve this fabric around as I get to that curve. So what I'll do is I'll sort of straighten the bottom fabric out so the two go together. And I was saying earlier, it doesn't really matter if the fabric sticks off a little there, because when we line it back up, I'm gonna chop that off later. Now I'll turn the entire thing over. Maybe here's where I actually do use my, and trim that off. And then I'll, I'm gonna advance my needles up so they're sticking up. And then I can put this back underneath and start. And you'll see it's trimming some stuff off here as it goes along. I love a serger because um, it is so, it makes it look so professional and it finishes all the edges up. Now in this one, I'm the top, the fabric, the curving fabric is on top and it's a little easier to do. So I'll straighten it out as I come along. And again, I'm gonna have some material left over and that's really fine because I'll trim that off. So I'll do the other sleeve the same, and then we'll go over to the table and I'll lay all this out to show you how it's supposed to go together. So here's our pieces so far. We've got our shape here of the sleeves on each side, the two front pieces that come down. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold the sleeves over here and match them up where they, where they turn right there. Match that up and I need to clip it together, but also then I'm gonna need to trim off the excess of the sleeve. So I will come in and make a clip so that goes together. And I can clip it down the sides. I'll add some clips down along the sides so that all of it stays together. Cause it's gonna get sewn together in just a minute. And actually considering that I just kind of didn't put these together so carefully, they're coming together really well down at the bottom. This is the bottom of the of the, the robe. So then I'll take my sleeve here. See what we've done here? Nice big sleeve. And then I'm gonna trim it up to that point. So what I will do is be very carefully get that out of the way and then I'll trim it. I'm gonna be very careful how I cut this so that I don't Cut the fabric down at the end down here very carefully. Perfect. Now, I'll do the same thing on the other side, but before I sew these sleeves together, I'm gonna add some cuffs to them. <coughs> Actually, I think I'll add the cuffs later and I'll show you why. So I think if I add the cuffs later, then it'll be easier to, um, maybe not. I'm still deciding, give me a second. <laughs> so those are together. I'm gonna flip the other side around here and I'll fold it together as well, just like I did the other side. The two fronts go together. This is the area where the sleeves are coming together. So I'll get those two seams right here will go together properly. You could use pins for this, not a problem, because we are gonna stitch this on the serger again. So you'll have to take out any clips or pins before you actually do the final construction. Now you could use French seams to put this together, it would actually make this sewn all on the front side. You basically would put wrong sides together, stitch it, and then you'd flip open a French seam. I love a French seam because it ties everything inside, but I just think this is gonna look better. Now at the bottom here, I will have to trim when we finally go to fold the bottom edges over because it um, turns out that I didn't cut this one exactly the same. All right, then I'm gonna cut my sleeve again by putting it together there. Make sure my points are together. 
I'll cut this one on this side this time. All right. So now we've got sort of the basics of our of our design. And then I wanna walk through a couple things I'm gonna do a little bit differently to make this uh, fun. I'm actually gonna leave an opening on one side over here so that the, the strap that we're gonna make, it's gonna come off as a tie. We'll be able to go through. It'll go inside the jacket. Actually, it'll come from inside the jacket outside and be tied. So basically it'll look like this one will go underneath and out and you'll be able to tie it together. Now, to get to that point, I do have to look at a couple of how I'm gonna finish this. And one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this material as cuffs on the, on the sleeves. So make some nice, cause this is a very soft material, even softer than this, and it'll be a nice cuff on your arm. So I'm gonna do some cuffs with that. I'm also gonna make the straps, the, tied, um, the ties, I should say, out of this material as well. And to do the ties, I do need to make sure that it's, I do know that it's gonna have to go around um, at least 24 inches, and then it's gonna need to have material off of it to tie. So this probably needs to be 40 something inches altogether, two 24 inch pieces to be able to tie together. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna figure out how wide I want it to be. I think I probably wanna do like a, a three inch piece. So when it's done, it becomes like a one and a half inch uh, piece like that, about that wide. It's hard to see that. And um, so I'll need to cut that. And this is, we're gonna measure this material. Yeah, it's, it's over. So I'm just gonna take a, a piece of that. Now I also want to look at how big do I want my do I want my um, cuffs to be, and they're going to have to match how wide this material is. So I have to measure this material and decide how wide my cuffs need to be. And they are almost, gosh, it's probably 30, 27 inches or so. I think is what we had cut before. So I'll need to make sure I have two pieces of 27 inches by however big I want the cuffs to be. And I don't want the cuffs to be have a, a stitched edge. So I want the cuff to be a folded over piece like this, I want it to fold over this way. So I'll decide in just a moment how long I want those cuffs to be. All right, let's uh, clear all this away and then I'll show you what I'm cutting out of this purple material. So I've got this super shifty fabric. It likes to move everywhere. And what I'm gonna do with it, see if uh, the minute I pulled it, it gets out of line. So I'm gonna line it up on one of the lines here, okay? And I'm gonna get it as close as I can to being exactly where I want it to be. Make sure it's sort of straight, even, top to bottom. I'm using a line across the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna trim it from this side over here. I'm gonna trim it off straight so I can get it straight. And then I wanna make sure it got all the layers and it didn't miss any that are off at a funky angle. No, they all seem to be pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna use my measurements from here. So I'm gonna do a three inch piece for my uh, ties. Okay, I'm gonna use that three inch piece and I'll make a one and a half, about a one inch wide tie. And then I know for my cuffs that I want them to be about three inches on my arm, right? So I need about six inches plus some, give or take some to do the, the, the seam that's gonna go at the top. So I'm gonna do about seven inches. So I'm gonna take this here. This is gonna be, and I have plenty around because I need 27 inches to go to the sleeve. So I'm gonna look and see if I can get 27 inches out of this. I can easily, I'm gonna line it up at the 40 mark. Now what I'm using is I'm using the, the mark on the actual table. I'm actually gonna go back to another mark there. And I need, oh, got stuff under here. I need 27 inches. I'm trying to line that up straight along the table and it's a little hard to do. But this is 27 inches down here and you can't really see it that well, but just trust me, I've measured this to 27 and that's out of the way. So now I have my two pieces for the 27 for the same size as my sleeves. So this is extra. I'm gonna go ahead so that any straight lines out of it, I can get it out of the way. And then I have the two pieces for my sleeves and then my pieces for my strips. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open this up and I will go to my, um, I will, let me open it more. I have that 
strap, that green piece of fabric I told you about earlier, the little strap piece. This is a, a piece of um, nylon pack cloth, real thin, like a ribbon space. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna fold this in half and sew it all the way down. You see how I've let the green out of the top here? I'm gonna sew across and then down the entire thing enclosing this. But when I get to the other end, I'll be able to pull this out the bottom and it will let me turn the whole thing inside out. So let's go into the sewing machine and show you how that works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, put my green part and my ribbon that I'm using inside there and then fold this in half and make sure that my ribbon doesn't come over to the part that I'm gonna stitch. So it's gotta stay in the fold over there. And then I will come to the machine and stitch across the top. And because this is some really shifty fabric, I'm gonna use quite a wide seam allowance. Um, about a five, about a three eighths. That's wide for those of us that do a lot of quilting because we usually use a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna keep going down, lining those edges up. Now you could use a guide on your machine for this if you wanted. In fact, I probably should, but I'm pretty good at, at watching my seam allowance. And this fabric is so silky that I have a feeling that it's not gonna hold its shape all that well when it becomes a tube that we you know, use as a, as a, a tie for this, this robe. So I'm not too worried about it. Now, one of the things that you may you're gonna you may have noticed when I was laying these out is that the ribbon is not as long as the fabric. And so what I'm gonna do in a moment is use the pull the ribbon out the bottom. See, the ribbon's not as long as the fabric, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and pull some of that. See here at the top? Sort of gives you a preview of what we're gonna do in the future. And that'll make sure there's enough sticking out the bottom. So there are devices you can use to turn tubes like this. And they all work fine, so you could certainly do it. I, I, I have no issue with that, but this is just easier. And this material is so slinky and silky that it's gonna just push through so well. We're almost at the end, and I'm just, again, making sure I line all the edges up. All right, we're almost done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really tie it off at the end, make sure it really goes well. But now what I do is I take this green end here and I hold it really strong. And then I'm gonna go to the other end and get it to turn, I'm pulling the other end. I'm gonna push sort of this, the green into the end here. Just get it started so it'll start to pull on its own. So that when I put pull pressure at the other end, it starts to turn the whole thing inside out. Okay, perfect. Now it's already starting. I can kind of push it down. Just pull <laughs> out of your view. See how much of this I can pull up here? Once you get this part started at the end, getting it turning inside out, it just, it's gonna work really fast. It's just about getting this pushed in started. Well, if I can hold it on the table, I would be able to show you, but I just keep pulling myself over. Oh, there we go, it's finally starting. See, there's four layers of fabric in here. I'm just trying to grab the outside layer as we go through. And part of what's happening is that part where the fabric and the green piece get together, they have to pull through. Ah, oh, there we go to get it over that hump. And that's what's going on right in here. There's a hump right in here where those materials come together. You really can't see it, but look, we're getting close to the end down here. So we again, keep pulling over and then you're gonna feel it in just a second. See, it comes out, it starts to come out there. And I can just continue to pull this fabric at the other end 
till it turns inside out. Now this is some very, um, like I said, not only slippery fabric, but it's it frays a lot. So you just have to be careful as you take it out of there. Just take your time so you don't actually fray it open. So it's starting to go. Oh, it's really starting to turn now. So I'm gonna finish turning this side out and then we'll go, we'll show you how to turn these into straps you can use. All right, that took about another minute to do, but it's done here. And what I'm gonna do at the end here is just clip off that bit of fabric, uh, that at the end. So I'll just cut that off and pull that out so your little green piece comes off. And now you've got this beautiful bit of strapping to be your strips. You could go iron this, but I don't think it's even gonna be worthwhile and noticeable. And then we'll cut this into the lengths we want to make ties. All right, let's go finish laying out our piece with the cuffs on it. So I've decided I want strips, uh, these ties to be um, two on the inside. So basically one will be here and one will be on this edge and then they can tie together on the inside if you want. And then two of them on the ends, on the outside, which is this would be the outside. So one will be in the fabric there and one will be on the end of this piece so that you can tie them together. <coughs> so. I do need to make sure that these ties that are gonna be on the inside and the outside get put on now. They have to be put before we stitch these edges together down the sides. So for us to get to that point, what I'm gonna do is I am going to figure out where that point is that the tie needs to come out the side. So what I'll do is I will lay the, top, the front, one of the fronts and the back together bring the other one over the top, line it up, and that's where it needs to go through would be right where that mark will be. So that one's gonna need to come through right in that area, right here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one, this will be the one that goes on the inside. And I can use a clip to hold it in. And I'll lay it flat and put the clip on. So now I know that needs to stay in that area right, because that'll be the one on the inside. Now the one for the other side is going to be done this way, which means I'm gonna put it on the inside. So I'll line these up. And I know it needs to go at that point right there. So I will put it on the inside of the two layers of fabric, stick it out the side. So that when I close it down, there it is. And I will pull it in till it's the right space and put a clip on it. So that one needs to stay on. Now I've decided to put this, the, to make the cuffs go on. Oh, before I do that, these will get added to the points when I'm folding it all up uh, and, and folding the edges to give it a nice finished edge. So these will go on later. Now the cuffs are gonna go on to the sleeves, but I talked about putting them on ahead of time, but I don't really want a seam going up the side. So I'm actually going to sew these together as a tube and then fold and put them on. And I'll show you that process in a minute. So let's go over to the machine and I will go ahead and serge all the way up and out the edges of each of the sleeves, trapping in these strips, these straps as we go. So there are ties ready for this to be folded together. As, you, as I showed you when I put the sleeves together, I don't like to start at the very end of the fabric because these this seam that really is important to go together might not properly fit. So I'm gonna start at that seam right here that I need to make sure lines up properly. I will pull up my presser foot and move my needles to where they're up so I can really slide fabric under here easily. And I'll start just to the one side of that stitch and come down. And again, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not cutting off too much fabric. Now here is important that I properly Pay attention to this, but I can't sew over that clip. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm holding this material in place. And in fact, I'll lift the presser foot and make sure that fabric gets underneath there properly. Oh, looking so good. Now I have no idea if my friend will wear this anywhere other than around his house. 
Uh, he's very unabashedly a fan of The Little Mermaid, but he may not want to do that um, everywhere. But I'll let him make that choice. It's not my problem to decide, and he may never wear this at all, but I think he really loves Little Mermaid, and he's probably going to wear it. And then we go down the sleeve the other end. All right, and then the other, I do the same on the other side and then we'll add on those cuffs. Right, so these cuffs, what we're going to do is they're going to get sewn on to these so that we don't see the seams. And so I'm going to take each cuff <coughs> and put the short sides together here and serge those first. So we'll serge the very short edge together. And again, this is probably easier to do with pip, kips, clips, and pins. Um, and I am impatient. This one's probably going to be the longest project I've made on this channel. And uh, it's going to be in the list of easy sewing <laughs> stuff, but it might not exactly be easy. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you how much I understand that. So now I'm going to take these, now that I have a, a tube, a really big tube made, I'm going to fold it right sides together like this and put those seams at the same place. And I'm going to take them to the sleeve, which is right here. And I'm going to put it on the outside of this sleeve. Um, actually on the inside of the sleeve, because I got to have, no, I did that wrong. Oh, I've got to put the wrong sides together. Sorry, I knew I was doing something wrong. The wrong sides together, make sure those seams are going the exact same direction, right there. Get that folded in half. Oh, looking so good. Then I'm gonna put this inside the sleeve, like this. And I'm gonna line up the pretty sides of the of the seam to the other pretty side of the sleeve seam on that one. Pretty side of the fabric, pretty side of the fabric. And then I'm gonna start stitching it around. Ooh. Now the reason this is gonna look good is that this seam where all of it goes together will be way up inside the, the sleeve and I'm gonna top stitch it down in a minute with the sewing machine so that it'll look really, really professional. So I'm gonna put all that together. And what this means is I don't have to worry about seeing any threads where the, um, where the underneath of the sleeve would come together. And the important part here is that both of these fabrics are the same length. And I did figure that out by measuring it earlier. So that, the, that this, this actual opening of the cuff and the sleeve are the same length. Otherwise you get real problems when you go to sew it together. Now, one of the ways people get over that is they'll make it all out of stretchy fabrics so, so they can just stretch and pull it together. But I'm not doing stretchy fabrics. And again, keep the fabric out from underneath the bottom. And you see what happens is we get this nice pretty seam that we don't see any edge here at the bottom of the cuff. And then I'll go through and top stitch this down and it'll look pretty when it's done. So I'm gonna do the other one and then we'll go to back to the sewing machine for some more. So I'm actually here at the serger and I've done a couple things uh, since I showed you. I did finish adding those pieces and I top stitch it, top stitch it down. And now I'm actually adding a strip around the the neckline with this same uh, fabric and I'm doubling it over and adding it just like I added the sleeves and this is so it's easier for the to have a nice soft neckline but also it will um <coughs> it will make it easier to balance out and top stitch that it'll look nicer when it's done so I'm finishing that um and then I am going to serge around the entire piece and that way I can fold the corners or the edges 
to get a nice finished edges for this uh, this kimono style rope. Now I say kimono style, it's not exactly kimono. They usually have really gigantic sleeves and they're very specific style, but this uh, kind of works like that for me. So um, it's an adjusted, modified kimono. So I'm only actually going to this edge, uh, the corner here where we're gonna have our tie and then the other will just be folded. Um, and I'll add the tie on in just a minute, but I think that'll look good. And then I'll just sort of fold this in um, here. In fact, I think I'll take it back out and sort of fold that in at the end so it looks a little nicer. No, actually it'll just fold, when it goes in, it'll fold like that over. So it'll be fine. All right, let me just go ahead and add to surge right down the edge here. All right, perfect. Now I started in the middle of this on the neckline. So I'm gonna go back to it and stitch down the other side, just like I stitched that side down. So this is left open and I'll keep stitching it, uh, surging it. And then I will see you when it's time for the next step. Bye. So here is the robe so far. And I've, I've added that piece here and I've top stitched it down as long, and I've done that um, on one of the sleeves as well. I still need to do it on uh, this sleeve over here. So I'm gonna top stitch this down. And um, now I just have to decide, am I just gonna turn the bottom edge underneath or should I put some sashing on that too? And, and honestly, I mean, I could see what it would look like with one of the other strips. I don't know, I think it doesn't need it because I'm also not gonna put it down the edges here. So I'm going to um, add the strap here to, to this part right here as I fold this underneath. This will get folded underneath and I'll add the strap to that so it can go over. I'll add it on the inside one here as well. And then my only other real step is to top stitch and do the entire bottom edge and the whole thing is, will be finished. So I'll go back to the sewing machine and I'll let you watch as I do it. All right, so I'm gonna add those st strips on for the, uh, for the ties and I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch this sleeve. And what I've done is I like the stitching on the lighter fabric so you see the dark stitching. So I'm going to um, put it underneath and push all of this seam backwards toward the lighter fabric. So then I stitch through it. Now it naturally actually wants to push the other direction, but I don't want it to do that because I want it to, I'm trying to find the seam, here we go. Uh, I want to see the thread on the lighter fabric. And I'm just using the width of the pressure, presser foot, <laughs> the pressure foot, the presser foot for this. So I just reach under with my fingers and I shove it this direction. And you'll see here I'm stitching right along the edge. And just making sure my fabric doesn't get caught underneath. None of this fabric that's down below here is getting caught. And it's these kind of little details that will make it look like it was made professionally. Now, of course, I'm, I'm a professional, you know, so. And see how nice that looks? It adds that stitch line along there. The last thing I need to do here on each of the sides is fold this over and add in one of the strip pieces here. So I'm gonna go to the other side of this. Here we go. And I will decide how to fold this over. So I can use some clips if I wanted. Um, and then I need how to get the strap in there as well. I think I want the strap just coming out of this point. So I can put the strap in here and put it over that way. And I think that'll be just fine. So let me go in and fold it. And then I will try to get the exact same size all the way down. So I'm using a line on the side of my machine to give me the mark of what I need to do on the throat plate. Now that's a pretty wide seam allowance actually, a, a piece there, but I want this to have, to not really fall open. And so that gives a nice look on that side with the stitch. And then I'm gonna do the same thing around the bottom in just a minute, but first I'll come to the other side and do the same thing. 
and here's the side that had it's the other piece and I'm gonna fold it over and I'll just go ahead and eyeball that same amount with my machine or with my throat plate so that I make sure I'm using about the same amount here we go and then when I get to the top I will be very careful to And I will come back and stitch. And let me make sure the other side is also particularly well entered. In fact, it pulled out of that. You see, I did this wrong, it pulled out. So let me get this back in here. I'll probably get my seam ripper and get some space. down each side I can do the very bottom edge uh, side to side and then the whole thing is pretty much finished so I'll fold the same amount up on this the bottom I'm gonna do a little more maybe than I would have done otherwise I think I want about an inch at the bottom and that's because I want to make sure and I'll use my guide for this I want to make sure it's nice and even but also I want a nice bottom edge so that it doesn't um doesn't look bad sometimes you can curl up in a long space and you're doing a long amount of stitching and I don't really want it to curl up So I'll put my one inch guide on there. Yeah, that's gonna look good. press this in advance and that would be a nicer way maybe to do it so you make sure it really goes and I may still press it before I actually give this away because I want to do a nice crisp bottom edge Done. I'm almost done with this entire project. Yeah, look at that nice bottom, crisp bottom edge. So I'm not really willing to model the shorts uh, that I made for my friend, but I will be glad to show you the actual kimono style. So you can imagine if you have little shorts with it, they would look underneath here wouldn't that be cute well listen i have no idea what my friend sleeps in who knows he might sleep in uh, a gigantic caftan or he might not sleep in anything at all but he can lounge around in this beautiful kimono style with the ties you know ties on the inside and uh and he's a little smaller than i am like i said so he'll have plenty of room in here well, that was a not too easy project, but it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed putting it together and hopefully you'll get inspired to do something also crazy fun like this. Uh, until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now. I don't know. I, I don't like Little Mermaid as much as he does, but I might keep this for myself. <laughs>